Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 16 of the Lico Daddy Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, drop me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's farm. Sliding window maximum. It's a hard one, uh, supposedly, so we'll see how that goes. Hope everyone's having a great week. Uh, oh, man, I am so tired. Uh, everything still hurts. My my um, my hamstring is still a little bit pulled, so I'm, but I went to the gym, so I'm a little bit... Uh, I don't know, I need to eat more maybe as well and sleep more. Anyway, let's get to the today's farm so I can actually sleep more and eat more and do those things. Alright, so you're given numbs as a sliding window of size K, which is moving from the way left of the way to the way to right. You can only see K numbers in the window. Each time the sliding window moves right by one position. We turn the max sliding window. Okay. So the max okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So um there are a couple of ways you can do about this one. Uh, I think the one what well, we did something yesterday with binary search tree, right? Or did I? No. Uh, yeah. Or may, am I thinking of like the contest or something? Maybe I'm thinking of the contest. Uh, but yeah. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. The easiest way, to be honest, is just by using like a uh, uh, a binary search tree type of thing, right? Where you can, uh, uh, you know, get the min every t or get the max every time and and then we move things update things you know binary tree stuff binary search tree stuff balance binary search tree ideally so that's going to be uh n log n log uh n log k where k is the number of numbers in the window because you're just keeping k elements and you you know you take and remove um in python you could do that with a sorted list uh and then if I was doing this in a contest, that's probably what I would do is n log k, say, and that would be fast enough for a lot of people. Um, you can actually do this also in linear time. Um, it probably is one of those, uh, what we call monotonic uh, q problems, mono q problems. Um, but I mean, I, I don't even remember which one it is. I don't, I, I don't solve it by memorizing uh, these things. Uh, so that's why I don't really know. I, I saw album by kind of figuring out the invariant and then just doing it from scratch, right? Um, or not doing it from scratch, but once you figure out what the invariant is that you want to figure out, the code is like three lines of code or whatever, right? On top of your four loops of setup, right? So that's why I don't really think about it. But, okay. Uh... What else would I going to say? Yeah, I mean, I think the binary search tree thing uh, uh, probably is fine. You know, yeah. So, but let's do the mono queue stuff, right? If it is mono queue. If it's not, then I'm just, you know. Uh, but yeah, for i in range of n, right? So basically, the idea behind a mono queue in general, or um, these things in general, is trying to figure out the invariant, right? And then variant is that let's say we restore two things in here, right, for each item, which is um, which is the current number. You can also store the index, but I've but in this case it's fixed, so it should be okay. Uh, yeah, the current number. Uh, so x, and then some max of x, right? So then now the question is. So what happens, right? So let's say you have a bunch of these and the max is here. So let's say you have a bigger number. Or let's say you, you come up with a new number, right? And there are only two cases, right? The, you know, let's say we have a new number Y. There are only two cases. It's either it's bigger than max or it's smaller than max. If, if it's bigger than max, uh, then this is the new max, right? If it's smaller than max, then it's just you keep the same max. The question is, okay, so that that's the 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 invariant that we want to hold up. The idea is how do we update this in a way such that that's true? And I'm trying to think about that right now. Um, and the way to think about it in general is just try to think what this number represents once you add it, right? Because basically, uh, for example, let's say y is the new max, and we update this with a new max, say y, right? What does this mean? Th that means that this number represents the max 
number going starting from this this current index and up to maybe some index y, y plus k right or or eh, it's not y plus k but the index i plus k or something like this right uh, maybe minus one but you get the idea um Yeah. And also the other thing is that well if this is now the new max then the previous max can will never be the max again going forward so then we can remove it. I think that's basically the idea. Um Yeah. Where, okay, so that's the idea if this is bigger, right? If this is smaller, what does it mean? It means that we still put in y. Do we? Well, I mean, that the, the new max is ma max, but then it may drop off in the future, right? And if it drops off in the future, then we need to look up the next number. So we need to kind of Yeah, and and I think a better example is maybe we have more numbers as well. Um, is that okay? Let's say y comes in. Uh, we have uh, mx one or whatever, mx zero, x zero. We have x one, uh, some other number, and of course this number has to be smaller than this number because if this number is bigger than this number then th this already doesn't exist by definition, right? So that means that if y is bigger than here, it will remove this because, like I said, this will never be a possible answer for the future. But if, if y is between mx0 and mx1, uh, mx1 is still never possible in the future, um, but mx0 still is the current max, right? So I think that... I think now I understand. So then this is the way that you kind of figure out, okay, so that means that when we, um, yeah. Uh, and of course, maybe in this case, we do actually want to, um, depending on how you want to do it, I, but just to kind of make it easier to read, we do actually want to keep the index. So let's say um, while length of Q is greater than zero, then now we're trying to pop from the back, right? Um, so. Let's say Q of zero. Let's just say zero. F uh, uh, this is negative one, not zero. I, I've been messing that up a lot, actually, for some reason on, on mono stuff. But uh, if this is less than or yeah, if this is I think less than or less than equal to doesn't actually matter that much. But if this is less than or equal to num sub i, then we pop uh, we pop because it can never be the answer after. After it pops everything that it can, it means that either uh, length of Q is zero, which is fine. That means that you know we're gonna do whatever, uh, or or uh, Q of negative one zero is greater than or equal to num sub i, which means that you know we can now append. Uh, let's say num sub i. Let's just keep the index and then the current max. Right, which is num sub i. Yeah. So that's the update. But before that, we should get the max. Right? And the max it should be just... Uh, uh, no, I think the first element's first element, right? Because, uh, yeah, by definition, otherwise it would have removed it. Huh. Why, why did I do this twice then in that case? Yeah, I don't think we need it. Maybe that's why I got a little confused. All right, yeah. Well, I mean, I get confused for a lot of things. So we can append this to the answer, assuming that i is at least k, right? Or k minus 1, maybe? Yeah, that means that the k elements, right? So then now we can return answer, and that should be good. But I also say that a lot. I, mean, I, I don't know. My confidence is a little bit poor lately because I have a lot of silly mistakes. Uh, yeah. 
hopefully that was okay enough to follow. I think the, the way that I think about it is just kind of go through these cases. And like I said, the Unwarian, right? What do we want the Unwarian to be? Is that, um, if, if I want to say it again, is that we want zero of, you know, the, the first element. We don't even need the index to be... Oh, no, 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 we do need the index. I think I just missed a step. Yeah, I think, I mean, we haven't submitted yet, right? So that's why. But yeah, otherwise, then Q is equal to zero, and Q sub, uh, oh, the first, uh, the index is, uh, hmm, is, that, is either this or, is it equal to, no, I think, or like I minus K, so then, so if this is I, I minus K is no good. So yeah, okay. Because we want I minus K, it's one that pop left, right? Okay. Really? Huh. Do I have an off by one? The index is I minus K. Hmm. Okay, so let's say k is three. Then these three numbers. Um, the first one being negative one doesn't make any sense. Did I have? Hmm. K is three. Yeah, it really doesn't make sense because we don't pop yet. Do we? Oh, whoops, I meant, what do I mean? That, that's not right, though, because that, that will always, no, is that? Oh, no, 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 yeah, 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 whoops. There we go, okay, okay. A lot of silly mistakes, like I said. So, yeah, so basically this is just saying that, okay, now the max element has slide outside the window, so then we could remove it. Um, yeah, like I said, the way that I think about these is kind of just think about the invariant, right? The invariant uh, after each loop uh, after this is basically, um, you know, Q of 0, 0 is equal to the max, uh, right? And yeah, and, and you know, notice that I don't really take advantage of any monotonic uh uh, you know, mono, you know, you know, it's a mono Q problem. It's a mono Q solution. I don't actually use anything monotonic in this problem, right? Um, the idea here and the reason why it's called mono Q is that, as you can see, um, based on these um, observations and principles, because uh, we keep on popping from the from the end where this number is bigger than the previous. You're basically deleting numbers that are up to this number where the previous number is bigger than this number, right? So that means in that way, you'll always be kind of monotonically decreasing because of that. So I don't even know if it's monotonically increasing or, or decreasing, right? But it's because of these um, properties that kind of talk about it. So I think uh, that's the way that I like to think about learning it because I think if you just kind of try to memorize these mono Q things, it's, you know, like it's not the way to kind of actually solve these problems and learn. I mean, like, yeah, maybe uh, maybe if you have this, or if someone gives you this exact problem, then yeah, you can solve it. But if they change something, you might not always know what to do if you don't have a great uh, foundation about what to do with it. Uh, but before I say that, let, let's submit, just in case I have some silly mistake. All right, good, good, good. Uh, no silly mistake this time. What did I do last time? Uh, oh, I, I guess I just, I did use uh, the set. Oh, I use multi set. Why did I use multi set? Huh. I guess multi set is fine. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, and then here, yeah, I did the. Uh, I did, uh, yeah. Oh, I guess this is the same. But uh, yeah. Uh, so what's the complexity here? As you can see, we only do pop and. So each item can only be pushed on the queue once, and each item can be popped at most once obviously um so this is going to be linear time and linear space uh yeah that's all i have for this one let me know what you think uh i'm so tired stay good stay healthy to get mental health i'll see y'all later and take care bye bye